Hey there, how are you? I hope you're having an amazing day or evening, depending on when you're here. Today, we are going to be talking about the importance of and strategies for self-promotion. So stay with me. You are listening to the Career Talk Learn, Grow, Thrive podcast, where we talk about all things career related. I tell you how it is and we get right to the point. I am your host, Stephanie Dennis. My background is in HR, which is what I have my master's degree in. And this is a good time to mention this podcast does contain adult language. Let's get into it here. I'm still getting used to the video podcast. Do you guys like the video podcast? Um, I'm just curious. Um, I like to see like how not messy my camper is, right? So I recorded a couple episodes last night and I literally did nothing. Like, oh, even my counter, there's some dishes in there, but I don't even think you can just see the washcloth. I don't even think you see the dishes. Oh, I literally just went to bed. <laughs> Like, don't touch anything. Because <laughs> if you've ever been in a camper, you know, like, you could have one thing on the counter. Those are Sophie's um, snacks, since we can't say the real word, and her water. Because if I don't see the water and the snacks, <laughs> out of sight, out of mind, there's been times I've got to feed my dog. I know. Um, but she is not shy at, re like, reminding me that I am failing her. So... Uh, she is very aggressive. There's her little unicorn dog. But anyway, when you're in a camper, it's very easy to have like two things on the counter and have it look like a complete mess. So it's still clean. I'm kind of proud of myself. Anyway, the importance of and strategies for self-promotion. Let's get into it. Most of us, let's be honest, not comfortable with self-promotion, myself included. I think if I'm being totally honest, maybe low-key vulnerable right now probably why I it took me so long to want to do a video podcast because I know like once I start doing video podcasts we have a long episode we make it into tiny little episodes or not tiny episodes like shorts right for social media and then it's like very self-promotion at the end of the day though this might help change your guys's mindset as well one of my friends uh, shared with me stuff you believe the information you're sharing is valuable yes well, yes, otherwise I wouldn't be doing it, <laughs> right? Like, great, so promote your helpful information so you can achieve your goal at helping others. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> um, so I get it. Most of us are not comfortable with self-promotion. That said, most of us need to um, leverage this skill set. We need to do the self-promotion, whether it's at the workplace or a business or a podcast or on your social media channels, whatever the case may be. Um, quick definition, just because I think it's important to get clear, dictionary.com, self-promotion, the action of promoting or publicizing oneself. So pretty straightforward. Um, I like definitions though, just because everybody... We live in a world, let's be honest, where people can think they're talking about the same things and not be. So... That's why you hear me often talk about definitions. <laughs> so one thing I think is important to talk about, what self-promotion is not. Self-promotion is not bragging. There is a huge difference between, hey, we made a new podcast episode versus I have the best podcast ever. No, you don't. Like, <laughs> no, you don't. Like, who says what is the best, right? You may have a great podcast, or a great product, or a great service, or a great social channel that helps other people, or entertains other people, or whatever your goal is, right? Um, I am a huge advocate of authenticity and people being very real and humble. <laughs> you can be great and humble. You can be brave and bold and humble. <laughs> so for me, self-promotion is not bragging at all. Um, so I don't want to sit here and be like, oh yeah, go get on your soapbox or, you know, center stage and just boast about how, you know, you're the greatest thing since sliced bread. Uh -uh. Okay. So why is self-promotion important in our careers? AKA the benefits. Number one, because we love a good list, promotion opportunities. If other people who have the power and in our position to help you get promoted, do not know what a fucking badass you are. How are they supposed to know to elevate you? And they may know just based on your work, but 
What if it is someone who is on a cross-functional team? You don't work with that person all the time and they don't even know, you know, all of the things, you know, so they wouldn't even know to tap you on the shoulder and say, Hey, Steph, come help us with this project. But if while you're having coffee or lunch or working on something else with someone and be like, Hey, by the way, if you ever need help with this, I also know a lot about this other thing. Cool. Now they know. Or I'm really interested in learning. I took a cert, like a certification program in this one thing. If you ever have a project you think I could help out with, let me know. I'd love to jump in and help. Put it out there. It doesn't have to be like, here is my resume and here is a 15 minute elevator pitch on how you, it's not an elevator pitch, by the way, that's <laughs> me trying to be sarcastic. Um, why you should let me do this thing for your team. Just put it out there doesn't have to be this big, grandiose thing, right? Number two, builds credibility. If you know a thing and you tell someone you know a thing and then they ask you to help you do the thing, what are you now? Credible. Number three, personal branding. <sighs> as much as I would love to tell you, it doesn't matter in corporate America. The fuck it doesn't. Yes, it does. <laughs> personal branding, your reputation, your credibility, your knowledge, your performance, right? Number four, it builds confidence. Confidence is huge. We've talked about it in quite a few episodes um, just because I feel like, okay, here's also, can we just say, fake it till you make it. You can walk into a room, head held high, standing up straight, making eye contact. All of these things are physical signs of confidence. And on the inside, you could be ready to explode. <laughs> For years, I faked confidence and I still struggle with confidence to this day. Shoulders up, shoulders back, whatever the whatever the yoga people say, do a, do a couple one of these ones, you know, stand up straight and make eye contact. That's also a sign of confidence. I did not know that until I was like middle 20s. Someone's like, make eye contact. It shows you're confident. And I was like, what? That's it. And that's that can be uncomfortable, right? If I'm just sitting... <laughs> awkward blink look away but also include eye contact and be like like that could be that could be creepy right so there's little things and there's probably a, like a whole huge list of things that you can do to build confidence so google that right ask um ask our new buddy chat gpt it's a shame new it's been around for a minute now but put it in there what are signs of physical signs of uh, showing confidence. And then how do you build internal confidence, right? Like how do you ingrain that into your mindset, which is also really important as well. Number five, professional and probably personal growth, but it definitely self-promotion is going to help you from a professional growth perspective. Number six, giving you a leg up, right? AKA competitive edge, competitive advantage. If you are humbly doing self-promotion at work. <laughs> I'm Blake is, ah, I've worked with some arrogant motherfuckers. Um, and you're letting people know how awesome and how great you are when it comes time to promotion or when it comes time for your boss to figure out, okay, who do I want to lead this next big project? Who do I want help with this next thing? right? If you're, if you're putting your name out there and bringing yourself forward for that kind of stuff, you're going to be more top of mind. Number seven, career and or probably both job satisfaction. Sometimes we're just working a job and that is okay. Sometimes we have a job in our career field. That's also great. Um, but either way, self-promotion, whether it's just a job or something in line with your career goals and aspirations, we still have to do self-promotion. Number eight, build and or rebuild your reputation. Hopefully we don't have to rebuild, but that happens. So if you're in that situation, rock on with your bad self. That is a harder challenge and I salute you even more. You're crushing it. You're going to do it. Stick with it. Um, but you want to make sure you have a good reputation. This kind of pairs well with credibility, right? You want to make sure that if you say, hey, I know the thing, and I can perform and do the thing that when it's actually your time to step up and do the thing that you do it. Otherwise, your reputation is going to be shit and people will not, one, ask you to help. And two, kind of like if you go to any restaurant, any business for that matter, and you get bad service, you're probably going to tell like 10 people. 
well, I don't know if these stats are accurate anymore. Back in the day, it's apparently I'm old now. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> there was a stat for every positive experience you have, you may tell one to three friends. For every negative experience, you'll tell up to 10. So having a good reputation is important because yes, other people are going to hear about it, but if it's the opposite, even more people are going to hear about it. Not good. Number nine, increased visibility. This one, pretty straightforward, right? The more you're putting your name out there and raising your hand and helping out and doing all of the good things, right, is going to increase your visibility. Um, more people are going to be noticing that good work. More people are going to be talking about that good work. Number 10, really great networking opportunities. You go and crush this next project. Okay, great. Now, hey, uh, Steph, you did really good on this project. I would love to introduce you to my counterpart over in this other department. They might need some help too, right? Networking. Number 11, career development. I don't know anyone who is where they want to be in their career who has just said, well, I got to a certain point and just stopped trying. No, we don't do that. <laughs> Continuous career development. Number 12, recognition. You will start getting positive recognition as you're promoting yourself and fulfilling whatever it is you're telling people that you can do. Number 13, developing leadership skills. Really important. I don't give a shit. And if you've been here for a minute, you know this, what your title is. There will be times where you are a leader, even if it is not by title and it is informal only. Having leadership skills, incredibly important. The I read this book probably like 10, 15 years ago. Now I feel like I need to Google when it came out because I'm like, do I sleep around then? Um, hold on, hold on. It is a book called Extreme Ownership, and it was written by uh, Navy SEALs, Jocko Willink. I want to say, I always want to say Williams. Um, I want to say it was like 10, 15 years ago. Publication date, October 20th, 2015. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, almost 10 years ago. Pandemic times, man. I don't know anything anymore. <laughs> don't listen to me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. My point is, it's been almost a decade since I read that book. To this day, there is not any other book that sticks out in my head when I think about leadership. This is the book. I also read it while listening to the audiobook. Um, and the delivery of this audiobook is, is fucking awesome. So uh, I would absolutely highly recommend that book. Total tangent. Bringing it back. Number 14, helping overcome gender and or diversity biases. Um, I wish I could tell you this isn't anything that we have to even worry about. Unfortunately, that's not our reality. Number 15, increased motivation, right? The more you're promoting yourself, the more you're getting that recognition, the more you are um, building up that confidence, the more motivated you are to go, to go out there and just crush it, right? Number 16, it puts your achievements center stage. Even if it doesn't put you center stage, like we, I've said this many times, I don't like to be center stage. Um, hence why it took eight years to do a video, <laughs> seven years. Math is really hard. Uh, eight years. Okay. 2016 it is now 2020. <laughs> Ah, number 17, it proves your value, right? You are valuable in all aspects of life. Let me repeat, you are valuable at work, in your personal life, all areas. If you are a dog mom, you are a valuable dog mom. When you are self-promoting, and then again, following through, that's a big part. You can't just promote and then suck. <laughs> you don't have a good way to sugarcoat that one. <laughs> it proves your value, right? Number 18, it sets you up to be seen as the subject matter expert. Hey, 
ask stuff about this. She really knows her shit, right? Number 19, puts you in a position to take control of your career. Once you say, hey, I know my shit and I'm going to prove it to you. Here's my KPIs. Here's the data. Here's the performance on the thing. Awesome. You want a promotion? Cool. Take all that data, all that information, all that great performance you've been doing and go ask for it. If your current company doesn't give it to you, <laughs> I promise you someone else will. Number 20, lead by example. You want to foster the culture of we can all share our achievements, right? I don't know anyone who wants to work at a company where it is not welcomed to cheer on someone else, where there's not welcome to celebrate someone else's successes. Hopefully that AC is not too loud. Um, okay, next set of lists because we love lists. I love lists. I it makes it just makes my brain happy. Tips, tools, techniques, tricks, resources, whatever we want to call this. How do we do it, Steph? That 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 might be the top the title of the list. Number one, be real and authentic. I've said it. I'm gonna keep saying it because um just met too many people who aren't. So <laughs> I will be the person who puts it on repeat. Number two, set goals. Set goals. This is so basic um, and often so overlooked. Number three, establish your version of your EVP, right? So in the recruiting world, EVP is employee value proposition. No, no, no. This is now yours. You're owning this shit. Employee value prop, right? What is your value that you bring to the table? What does that mean, Steph? Break it down. What is your unique abilities? What is your um, unique selling proposition? Uh, break it down further. Why are you a fucking badass? That's the question you need to answer with a whole lot of corporate words around it. <laughs> Number four, start with what you know, your current role, your current skills, your current knowledge. You don't have to go get a master's degree or a certification or take a new course you know shit already. You get up and go to work to do something. Or you did if you were part of a layoff. And you will again. Number five, network. Number six, create a personal brand. If you are in a role where a portfolio makes sense, create it. Get ready. You need to be prepared for the opportunities you are trying to manifest, attract, get after in your life. Number seven, leverage social platforms. You know a lot of things about the things. Great. What social platform is good for you to talk about those things? Get after it. Number eight, seek feedback from your team, but also other people. Your team could be biased. Your team could also, eh, fuck it, we'll say it. They could suck. <laughs> they could suck. <laughs> um, if you are the smartest one in the room, Yes, feedback still could be valuable. Most feedback is valuable, even if the delivery is garbage. I've said that before, right? Um, that's from a different book. I want to say it's thanks for the feedback or thank you for the feedback. Also game changer. Um, read it. Uh, you, hold on. As a female author. And I don't want to be wrong. So I don't know if they changed the cover, but it was a white book with a sticky note on it. And I love sticky notes. I just want to remember that. <laughs> um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Thanks for the feedback. Also 2015, Sheila Heen and Douglas Stone. Good book that changed my viewpoints about feedback in a big way. Um, number eight, create a website. Does it make sense for you to put your knowledge center stage on a website probably does probably so maybe not but probably number 10 even if it's literally a landing page right one page doesn't need a menu here's the things right number 10 design a brand go into canva go into adobe don't look at my brand i'm not good at this <laughs> yes i love marketing i don't like branding like i create like my podcast cover art I literally did in mid journey because I wanted something different I wanted something unique and I want something cool and I love bright ass pink and neon green I think those two colors together look fun to me um is that a good brand I don't know probably not I'm not a branding expert however 
something I love. But you can go to Canva. You can go to Adobe uh, Photoshop. Like not just any like Adobe PDF viewer, right? <laughs> like can help you there. <laughs> go on Canva. Literally type in logo and like you will find a ton of helpful resources. I think Canva, there's a lot of free stuff you can do in Canva. Even for their pro, I would say it's like 15 bucks a month. Like it's pretty affordable. Number 11, create content. Start talking about the thing you know about. Right? Number 12, become a speaker. If you are in a position or in a situation where whatever it is you know about, whatever it is you want to talk about, maybe a keynote speaker is a goal you want to work towards. Maybe you become a guest speaker. Maybe you start with being a guest on someone's podcast, right? Hey, I've been a guest on all these podcasts. I've done these online trainings. I would love to be a speaker at your online event. Turn that into, hey, I've done all of these online events. I would love to be a guest speaker at your conference. Hey, I've done all of this stuff. I'd love to keynote your next conference, right? Number 13, refine your story and storytelling skills. Uh, people relate to stories. It... Um, when I think about stories, I think about Brene Brown. Um, she tells a story about swimming with her husband. And uh, I don't know how long ago she first told that story. I could almost re, re I could almost tell it to you. I'm not going to because it's not my story to share. <laughs> Go listen to her audiobooks and her podcast. Um, but I would definitely look at her for storytelling. I don't know if she teaches it. Uh, directly. I don't even know initially when she started uh, speaking, if she knew she was a good storyteller. Uh, if I remember right, it could be wrong. So don't quote me on this. Uh, I think she just started telling stories. And I was like, oh my gosh, you're a great storyteller. She's like, really? Um, but it makes a difference. People remember a story. And if you have a good story, they're going to remember the takeaway. This is the important part, the takeaway from that story. Number 14, apply for awards. Um, you may not get them, but you might. Uh, in the world of marketing, um, especially for companies, greatest company with, I don't know, add whatever title you want, right? Workplace culture, remote opportunities, blah, 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 blah. Most of those come with a very... Um, flexible application and a very expensive application fee. Some of them do follow up. Some of them don't require that. The ones that literally you just put some money next to your name and you get an award. It's kind of like a PR release. You put out a PR release for a new podcast and now you have, I don't know, 19 to 37 different companies literally just reposting that PR thing that you put out because you distributed it correctly. Okay, but now channel 19, which is a subdivision of a subdivision of a subdivision of ABC in middle of nowhere, fucking USA. Okay, but now you're seen on ABC, right? Same thought process. Number 15, get to read on, read, read books or listen to audiobooks. Do both. I do both. I don't know if I've ever told you guys that. I do both. I listen to the other audio book while I read it because it helps my brain retain more information. It doesn't matter. Read. Learn things. <laughs> 16. Leverage online courses. There are a ton of online courses for free. And there are a ton of online courses that you pay for. Pick some. Whatever it is you want to learn more about. And number 17. Seek out a mentor. Um, I did not do this early enough in my career. I will fully admit everyone told me to, and I just didn't know who. Um, so that held me back a little bit in terms of like doing it. I don't know. I think if I found the right person earlier on in my career, actually, I don't know. I know it would have made a difference. Um, so be better than me. <laughs> okay. Super quick. Uh, the don't list number one, we're not being fake. Number two, we're not lying. We're not embellishing. Number three, we're not being arrogant. Do not be 
arrogant asshole. Number four, we're not being selfish. Number five, we're not dismissing ethical issues. Number six, we're not ignoring feedback. Number seven, we're not, um, we're not going to overdo it. Right. Um, number eight, we're not going to be greedy. And number nine, we're not going to put all of your eggs into one like self-promotion basket. Like I put all of my effort and all of my energy into doing this thing for this one particular outcome. Ooh, separate those eggs, right? <laughs> right. Um, because there are going to be times in our careers where we want to put a lot of energy and all of our energy into a thing. But there are so many things outside of our control, the economy, the company's financial stability. You could work your ass off for this huge project and put all of your time and energy into this one thing for two years. The economy takes a hit, tech market crashes, and now you're laid off. You did a lot of work, but in your interview, how was the launch of that project? What were the results? Did you meet your deadlines? I was laid off before we had a chance. Most people, I think, because layoffs are becoming like so common, especially since COVID hit, most people are going to be understanding of that. However, not everybody. Okay, that's it. A little bit longer than normal. That's okay. Um, hopefully you found this podcast episode helpful, valuable. If you have a topic you want me to cover, reach out, let me know. As always, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here supporting the show. I appreciate you so much. Check out my website, stephdennis.com. You can support the show, as you know, simply by listening, sharing with a friend, um, monetarily, PayPal, Cash App, Venmo. Spotify does have monthly um, donation like subscriptions now, which is pretty cool. And of course, leaving a rating and or review. You can find me on the socials, stephdennis13, mainly Instagram and TikTok. And then over at Instagram at Career Talk Podcast as well. We are written, produced, hosted, and edited by yours truly. You are so awesome. So amazing. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day.